The movie begins by introducing Kurt, the younger brother and trusted cornerman of Eric Sloan, the reigning heavyweight kickboxing world champion. Following yet another triumphant defense of his title, Eric finds himself swarmed by the media's enticing offers to compete in Thailand, a renowned destination for kickboxers. What about Thailand? What about it? I understand kickboxing was invented there and they're the best at it. What the hell are you talking about? Kickboxing was invented in the US. Muay Thai was invented in Thailand. Anyway, captivated by the idea, Eric's excitement reaches a fever pitch, and he wastes no time in making a spontaneous decision. Kid, book us a flight to Taiwan. First, Bangkok. Bangkok, Taiwan, Tokyo. Hey, what's the difference? Kicking ass wherever I go. Without hesitation, he promptly arranges a flight to the city of Bangkok. Upon arriving in Bangkok, Eric begins to explore local attractions at his hotel. You're fighting your champ next week. I know. I'm ready. Don't worry. Watch your wallet. She doesn't want my wallet. She wants to make it with the champ. For the majority of their lives, the two brothers, Kurt and Eric, were raised separately, with Kurt under the care of their mother and Eric living with their father. However, fate brings them together, and they now train side by side. During their training sessions, Eric, as the experienced fighter, takes on the role of a mentor, but doesn't hold back in critiquing Kurt's fighting style. How many times do I have to tell you? You don't win fights with that tip-tap shit. Power. Power kicks. With a stern tone, Eric scolds his younger brother, pointing out that his kicks lack the necessary power. That's power, kid. In the locker room, as Eric gears up for his upcoming fight, he realizes there is no ice. Recognizing the importance of ice for his pre-fight preparation, he asks Kurt to fetch a bucket of ice. You never fought this style before. It's so different. Punch is a punch. Kick's a kick. We came to fight. Give me some ice, will you? As Kurt goes to get a bucket of ice, he becomes increasingly wary when he witnesses Tong Po, Eric's formidable opponent, unleashing powerful kicks on a solid concrete pillar as part of his own intense preparation. Filled with worry, Kurt pleads with Eric to reconsider fighting, fearing his brother isn't prepared enough. Despite Kurt's heartfelt plea, Eric dismisses his concerns, exuding confidence and determination, refusing to back down from the challenge. This guy was kicking one of these with his f***ing legs. Ah! Until Plasso was falling down! So what? Can he move like me? Wow, this actor could really move. He could have tried kickboxing in real life. As the fight begins, Tong Po quickly establishes his dominance, overpowering Eric and delivering a knockdown blow in the very first round. Astonishingly, Eric musters the strength to rise from the canvas, determined to show he's the best. Cut me with an elbow. That's the way they fight here, I told you. Mother was a street fight. I'll show him. It's cancer. No. However, as the fight goes on, Eric endures a barrage of brutal strikes from the formidable Tong Po, leaving him battered and bruised. Witnessing his brother's suffering, Kurt, desperate to protect Eric from further harm, decides to throw in the towel as a sign of surrender. Yet Tong Po's ruthless nature is revealed as he callously kicks the towel out of the ring, refusing to halt his relentless assault. With a vicious strike to Eric's back, Tong Po renders him immobile. In a valiant attempt to protect his brother, Kurt steps forward, only to be mercilessly kicked out of the ring by Tong Po, the force of the blow sending him crashing outside of the ring. Clearly outmatched, Kurt is left with no choice but to retreat. His main focus now on his injured brother. However, to their dismay, the fight officials show little concern and leave them stranded on the street in need of urgent medical attention. Hey, where are you going? Where's the goddamn hospital? Hey, you hear me? Fortunately, Winston, a retired United States Army Special Forces soldier, comes to their aid. Recognizing their dire situation, Winston selflessly offers assistance and agrees to drive them to the hospital, becoming their unexpected ally in their time of need. By the way, my name's Taylor. Army Special Forces, retired, sort of. Once inside the hospital, Kurt anxiously seeks updates on his brother's condition. The caring nurse reassures him that the medical team is working diligently, doing everything within their power to help Eric. However, she explains that they must await further evaluations and treatments. The following day, the doctor delivers a heart-wrenching verdict to Kurt. As a result of Tong Po's merciless attack, Eric has suffered a grave spinal injury, leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. The doctor delivers the devastating news that Eric's ability to walk has been irreversibly lost, forever altering his life and leaving Kurt shattered by the immense impact of this tragic outcome. Consumed by a vengeful fury, Kurt turns to Winston, hoping for assistance in tracking down Tong Po. However, Winston, concerned for his own and the safety of all Americans in Thailand, flatly refuses to aid Kurt in seeking revenge outside the confines of the ring. He explains that taking matters into their own hands could jeopardize the well-being of their fellow countrymen. You go after him outside the ring and we're dead, all of us! He's too fat! 
valuable to them. Winston's stark warning leaves Kurt with a disheartening truth. The only way to face Tong Po is within the structured confines of a sanctioned fight. And you are not good enough! Filled with anger and determination, Kurt goes on a quest to find a skilled trainer who can teach him the art of Muay Thai. However, his initial attempts are met with ridicule and laughter from the local fighters, causing him to feel discouraged. Yes, I want to try and Muay Thai. Oh, really? I want him. I want Tom Po. I want to fight him. <laughs> Just when hope seems lost, Winston, seeing Kurt's resolve, finally relents and reveals the name of the only person crazy enough to train him, Jian Chao, a renowned and respected Muay Thai master. Excited by the prospect, Kurt eagerly prepares to meet this legendary instructor. But Winston, being ever rowdy and adventurous, insists that they enjoy a night of drinks before he introduces him to the master. I don't want to drink. Do you want me to take you tomorrow? We go drinking tonight. It's the deal. Inside the strip club, amidst their drinks, Winston unexpectedly discloses a crucial piece of information to Kurt. He reveals that Tong Po's manager, Freddie Lee, possesses significant influence and holds a reputation for being both well-connected and dangerous. This revelation underscores the magnitude of the challenge they face. However, this vulnerable moment leads to a deeper bond between Winston and Kurt. Winston opens up about his regret, sharing the story of how he failed to support his brother, who had always been there for him. The next day, Winston Winston drops off Kurt at Xian's house and leaves. Don't you provoke him, you hear? As soon as Kurt steps inside, he finds himself ensnared in a trap cunningly set for unwelcome visitors. Suddenly, Xian appears, questioning Kurt's presence and intentions. With honesty, Kurt explains his quest for a master to teach him the ways of Muay Thai. However, Xian, harboring a dislike for arrogant Americans, sternly refuses Kurt's request. Unfazed by the rejection, Kurt recognizes and insists, revealing that it was Winston who sent him. Winston Taylor? heard about American champion last week. Very swelled head. Lost badly in fight. That was my brother. And now he cannot walk. The cunning old man then tells Kurt he never makes a decision to take on a student on an empty stomach and sends him off to a grocery store. As Kurt visits the local grocery store, he discovers that it is owned by Xian's niece, Miley. When he shares his intention of seeking training from her uncle, Miley's face contorts into a smirk as she tells Xian no longer accepts students. You're going to fight Tong Po? Tong Po, very mean man, very dangerous. He ran this province for Freddie Lee. What do you mean? We must all pay or there is trouble. Amid their conversation, a group of menacing individuals led by Freddie Lee, known for extorting stores in the vicinity, storm into the shop. Despite Miley's fervent pleas for Kurt to refrain from intervening, he disregards her advice and bravely confronts the aggressors, engaging in a fierce altercation. As Miley observes the unfolding events, an expression of anger takes hold, aware that the fight is far from being the end of their troubles. That was very stupid! I get in big trouble now! But I did it. You didn't do it. But he Lee won't care. And look what you did to my store! Upon Kurt's return to Xian's house, the turn of events at the store prompts Xian to change his mind. Hearing about Kurt's courageous act, Xian agrees to become his instructor and takes him on as a student. In the days that follow, Xian diligently trains Kurt in the art of Muay Thai, imparting his wisdom and expertise. Ready to protect? Uh huh. Oh! Guess not. Meanwhile, Miley pays a visit to the house, expressing her frustration over the incident. Xian explains to her that he refrained from taking action against Freddie Lee's men to protect her from potential harm. Something I want to do for you a long time ago, but if I do, then put you in danger. American can get away with it, so it's good. In the evening, the trio gathers for a heartfelt dinner, where Kurt takes the opportunity to apologize sincerely to Miley for the unfortunate events that occurred at her store. Following the meal, Kurt accompanies Miley on the walk back to her home, engaging in deep conversation that reveals their shared experiences and upbringing. Eventually, they bid each other goodnight and share a tender kiss before parting ways. In the days that follow, Kurt immerses himself in grueling training sessions, pushing his limits and building his resilience to withstand pain. His training focuses not only on enduring physical challenges, but also on mastering the art of inflicting pain on his adversaries. Meanwhile, in the city, the reigning champion, Tong Po, remains an unstoppable force, effortlessly defeating every opponent thrown in his path. One day, Kurt pushes himself too hard during training Kick the tree. and hurts his leg to prove himself worthy of being a student of the great Xi'an. Take your bag and leave my house. You don't want training. You want me to break my leg? Your brother, remember? What this? What about this? 
In the following days, with a reinvigorated sense of purpose, he goes through his training with flying colors. Ready to protect? Yeah. I'm okay. During this time, Eric begins rehabilitating and moves from being confined to a bed to a wheelchair. The next day, Jean employs a cunning plan to evaluate Kurt's progress in his training and also entice Freddie Lee to arrange a fight for Kurt. He tricks Kurt into consuming an excessive amount of alcohol, aiming to test his skills under the influence. Xian convinces Kurt to dance with a couple of strange women in the bar, setting the stage for an unexpected turn of events. Xian secretly bribes a couple of regulars at the bar to initiate an attack on Kurt, anticipating the outcome with delight. However, to Xian's satisfaction, Kurt demonstrates remarkable prowess by swiftly subduing his attackers. Xian! This impressive display of skill brings a sense of pride and confidence to both Kurt and Xian and convinces Freddie Lee to give Kurt a shot. What happened? Why those guys tried to hurt me? Did they succeed? No. Why did you leave and, and why they were so pissed at me? Because I tell them you say that their mother have sex with mules. A fight gets arranged with Kurt and another Muay Thai fighter, and Kurt continues to impress by defeating his opponent with relative ease, which forces Freddie Lee to give Kurt a shot at Tong Po. I want Tong Po! Keep it the following day, Winston and Eric go to visit Kurt. Eric congratulates Kurt on his fight, but can't hide the bitterness he feels for what's happened to him. Kurt goes to train alone in the forest and finds himself in an eerie Buddhist town, but is able to find his way back when he sees Miley. Upon Kurt's return, his brother Eric makes a heartfelt plea, urging him not to engage in the coming fight against Tong Po. He put you in that wheelchair for life. That's right, and I don't want you in one alongside me. Give it up. Let's go home. I should have listened to you. Now it's your turn to listen to me. Despite Eric's sincere efforts, Kurt remains resolute in his decision, determined to confront his brother's assailant. In the midst of their discussions, Kurt receives a foreboding letter from Freddie Lee, outlining the terms of the fight. It is revealed that they will adhere to the ancient way, a brutal method where both fighters wrap their hands in hemp rope, coated in resin, and embedded with shards of broken glass, transforming their fists into lethal weapons. Bullshit! You're not gonna fight that asshole like that! Freddie Lee, Scheming to secure Tong Po's victory, orchestrates a plan to fix the fight. To increase the stakes and ensure a massive payoff, he borrows a staggering $1 million from Tao Liu, the powerful leader of the Thai crime syndicate. Freddie intends to use this borrowed money to bet on Tong Po. Before the highly anticipated match takes place, a dreadful turn of events unfolds. Miley becomes a victim of Tong Po's brutality, enduring a vicious assault that leaves her physically and emotionally scarred. <laughs> Simultaneously, Eric falls prey to Freddie Lee's sinister scheme as he is abducted and held captive with the intention of using him as leverage to manipulate Kurt. Freddie Lee seeks to blackmail Kurt into intentionally losing the fight. Desperate and filled with anguish, Miley turns to Winston, pleading for his assistance in locating Eric. However, Winston finds himself torn and hesitant to confront Freddie Lee. Oh, rape me, but I did not tell Kurt. His mind must be clear for the fight. So you see, you must help him find Eric. As the fateful day of the fight arrives, Kurt finds himself faced with a heart-wrenching ultimatum from Freddie Lee. You want brother alive? Make crowd happy. Let Tom Po punish you all the rounds. As the fight commences, Tong Po unleashes a relentless onslaught upon Kurt, subjecting him to a merciless barrage of blows within the ring. The vicious punishment he endures at the hands of Tong Po leaves Kurt bruised and battered, his strength waning with each passing moment. Amidst the chaos, Jian and Winston embark on a daring mission to find Eric, determined to rescue him from the clutches of Freddie Lee's henchmen. Displaying immense courage and skill, Jian and Winston engage in a fierce confrontation, overpowering Freddie Lee's men and successfully liberating Eric from his captors. Just as the final round is about to commence, a surge of hope and relief fills the air as Eric makes a triumphant entrance alongside Xi'an and Winston. Mixu Kao! Mixu Kao!
The sight of Eric standing beside him ignites a renewed sense of determination within Kurt as he realizes his brother is safe. Cut these ropes. What? Just cut them. Filled with a mix of hurt, rage, and determination, Kurt taps into his inner reservoirs of strength. With his emotions fueling his every move, he unleashes a relentless assault on Tong Po, delivering a flurry of precise kicks and punches. Each strike finds its mark with calculated precision. Kurt's relentless onslaught gradually turns the tide of the fight, overpowering the brute force of Tong Po. In a climactic moment, Kurt emerges victorious. That actor could try kickboxing thing was a troll, by the way. I know perfectly well who Dennis Alexio is. I just wanted to see how many would comment about it before finishing the video.